Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. It's a nice Saturday evening. We've had some rain here in the Rogue Valley. Just pleasant. Real nice. So tonight we're looking at a McCulloch 110. This is another one of the uh, boat anchors. Uh, I wanted to go through the assembly on these because there's a, a, a misconception out there among a lot of folks that these are really hard to work on. They're not. The first time you get into one, you might go, geez, this is a pain in the ass. If you follow a certain set of procedures, they're easy to reassemble. Now this is a short gun. It's already together. The only reason I took it apart was carburetor. Uh, I was pretty much certain that there was going to be something wrong in it, and I was right. I wanted to rebuild it, and I would have done that on film, but I might have this zoomed in a little too much. See if we can get a focus inside of there. See all that corrosion? This pitting down in here? I have no confidence that that casting would hold gasoline. So, that got put to the side, put a spare carburetor on, and it appears to be a, a new takeoff. I don't know where I got it. Whatever. We're going to use it. Uh, I tested spark before I took this thing apart and hosed it down. I've tested it since, but we'll do it one more time because I'm actually curious with this new camera whether the uh, uh, spark will show up in the, uh, the video or not. I'm, I'm making the video, Katie. Alright, let's give... Whoops. That is half in. thought I had everything nice and organized here, but there's always something that I miss. Well, I don't know if that'll show up in the uh, video, but there is definitely spark. So, and that obnoxious noise in the background is the pink Husqvarna chainsaw that I've bought for... Uh, well, I bought one for each of the kids. Katie's out here with me right now wanting to be part of the fun. So anyway, all right, please don't do that again, okay? There's no way people can hear me on the video if I got that going. Thank you. Okay, so a quick overview. You got your flywheel, your coil, carburetor. Carburetor has a casting on it. It goes underneath the coil. There's a couple insulators. They're just a nylon insulator that the screws go through, and then a couple of nylon washers underneath here, or phenolic or something. Make sure you get those in place so this coil is properly isolated, otherwise it won't fire. Your fuel hose comes down underneath. That is your tank fitting. That connects up to the fuel tank right here. Very important that you have that thing clocked with the little tang facing down. There's a notch in the housing, engine housing, that we'll look at a little bit later. That's important for it. Muffler, clutch, sprocket. You don't have to take any of that stuff off. And then here's your, your automatic oil pump. That little T-hose right there is very important. That's what plugs into the tank and allows oil to leave the tank and go into the uh, oil pump. Okay, I think we're ready to start reassembly here. See if I've got things laid out as well as I think I do. Here's the engine housing. Let me zoom this back out. Now you can see all of my messy garage again. Someday I'll clean this. Just don't know when. Okay. So, you've got the engine housing at the back here, and you've got to fish the spark plug wire through that, and you want to make sure that your fuel hose is routed so that it will be out in front and not kinked. So that's the routing that you want. You want your spark plug wire coming back over here, and it'll wrap just around the fuel hose, and it won't kink anything if you put it together exactly like that. So it's easiest to start from the side, fish that plug wire through, and there's 
already a step that I need to remember, and that is the throttle rod here. Now, if you put that in first, you could risk it falling out. Yeah. Now, this has a hook shape to it, so you just line it up into the carburetor right there. Yeah. Push it down. Yeah. And I have a cheerleader here. Push it down, roll it into place. If you put your magnets on the flywheel up, it'll pull over and hold to that. That way it doesn't fall out now that you're working like this. So you kind of fish this back, taking time to make sure that this fuel barb, there's a channel inside the housing there that hose fits into. You want to push it back until that barb drops into, or the, uh, the tang will drop into the little slot here on the case. So, but you got to screw it? Now the screwdriver helps pry it into place. Okay. okay. Now it's time to do... You can see that tang, that fuel barb dropped in, and you can see it indexed right here. That's exactly what you want. So at this point, there are three main engine housing screws, engine two housing screws. One of them is up top here. I like to start with that one. Yep. Because it can be the biggest pain in the neck. So get a few threads on it. The next one is down here, underneath where the air filter would cover would go. Drop that in there. Most of these original McCulloch screws are a 5 16 head, but they also have a screwdriver slot. Last one, right down here on the bottom. Okay. Now, we're going to go to the power tool method. Yeah, power tool. Just don't get carried away. You won't break anything. Okay, engine is secure in the case. Next thing is to get this throttle linkage rod hooked up. And at that point, you want to get it away from the magnets because they'll fight you. And then, using a pair of needle nose pliers, just get in here, grab it, set it in the slot, and push down. Now, you can see this is, there we go, it's not an exact science. This plastic trigger is stronger than it looks, and you've got to really get some force on it to get it down in there. Alright, so that's in place. Next, I think I want to resecure the starter. Make sure I didn't lose a, a wrap on the rope here. Nope, still getting tight. So there's three screws on this. There's a number of different styles on these little McCulloughs. The early Mini Max had flathead screws, like this one at the top. This one's got a mismatch. And some of the really early ones actually had machining in the engine housing here that the starter cover dropped down onto, and then there were these kind of, oh, almost rectangular washers that went on top with the screws. This is just screws, so you want to make sure that you don't get too much force on them, or you'll crack that plastic, and then you've got a problem. Then you're going to eBay to find parts. Okay. Alright, now that that is together one overlooked thing that's common and folks wonder why they end up with an engine housing full of garbage this is an air filter seal it's just a real thin piece of rubber that hooks on the neck of the carburetor right here KV, what did you do with my baby screwdriver? Hi. Aha! There it is. So make sure it's clean first of course and then 
And just push this in place and go around. You have to hold it as you gain a little bit. There it goes. All right. Now that that's in place, let's put back on the rear handle. Now this one, it has the common crack to it. You can see that right up here. It's still structurally sound. What that means though is somebody's over tightened and this. So you don't want to keep over tightening it or it's just going to get worse until it's a useless piece of garbage. So the top uses this self threading screw. The bottom has the strap here and then you'll see that there's some spacers on I these screws. Very important if you tighten directly to this plastic it is not going to last okay. any time at all. So, you want to get your spark plug wire through the hole in the handle and get it down into the notch. Yep. Set it into place. Set it into place. This guy in here goes to start a little bit. Come on, baby. I just need to pick this thing, and then I got to put it on here. I'm not going to tighten those yet until I get up top here. Come back and retort these. Okay. I'll get this handle because I noticed that it was loose when I started. And that movement back and forth could have contributed to some of this plastic breaking out as well. Alright. So, let's put on our fuel tank. If you don't empty all the stuff out, this is going to be messy. Because you've got to set it up vertical. Almost upside down, really. Upside down. Make sure your T for the, ho the oil is lined up. And you're going to feel that fuel barb as you start pushing in. And there's an O-ring on it. You've got to get it perfectly seated. And I felt that go into place. The other thing is you want to make sure that that oil hose, you can barely see it back in there, make sure it doesn't cock sideways or something, make sure it gets into that tank, otherwise you're going to have one hell of an oil leak there. Once that is in place, these employed a very sophisticated, I'm being a smart ass, manual oiler. That little rod sits in the notch right there. And, and hits the I'm plunger right there. So you got the hey, you got the engine housing cover here that just slips into place. Now one thing I forgot to talk about is the these originally came with these kind of oh they're almost a felt on top of the tank here, and the one for the oil is already missing. They're supposed to absorb a little bit of spillage. Hey, babe, seriously. Careful. It's supposed to absorb a little bit of spillage there, but they also like to bunch up when you're reassembling. So you got to watch that and try and keep it flat, otherwise it bunches between the engine housing and this cover, and it doesn't make a good seal. They're really kind of more of a pain in the butt than they're worth, but since it came with it, we will try to salvage it. That's about as good as it's going to get. Again, it's really important on this housing to make sure that everything's lined up right because you're also going through a tab on the fuel tank on this bottom screw. And you don't want to break that. Because those fuel tanks aren't common, especially ones that can't leak.
Okay, so there, it's almost looking like a chainsaw again, and we haven't spent hardly any time at all. Before I get any further, I'm going to come back over to the carburetor side here, and one of the things to get the engine out, you've got to take the choke knob off. Now that's set so it'll only go on one way. And you'll know when it seats. Just got that little baby screw. You do not want to over tighten this either, but you want it tight enough that when you're out cutting it doesn't rattle out. That's good. And if it opens and closes the choke, you know it's good. Air filter, I've already cleaned this one out, it'll be good to go. Literally just drops into place there. This air filter, like so many, the cover is missing one bar there. This is not a pristine saw. It's not a collector's item, so I'm not going to try and find a replacement cover for it. You got two tabs that lock under the starter, and then you kind of push this into place. On some of the early Mini Macs, the Oh, the Mini Mac 1 through the Mini Mac 35, there was actually a wire snap. It was back here that had a little notch on the case. You just indexed it in, snapped it into place. Not a whole lot different. Sounds pretty good. I think I know why this one was uh, huh, put on the shelf, folks. I think there's something wrong with that clutch. So, so I'm going to do like the chain brake handle. You see, it's got a a knockout right yep. there. And then he put one corresponds on the saw itself. You got to line that up right, push it on, and then roll it back around. Now, if we were actually finished, slap your drive case cover on. There's a bolt right there on the chain brake. Put a nut and washer there. Bolt, or excuse me, nut for the, the bar. And that's literally it. That's all there is. But since we've already got the video going, and this is already longer than probably anybody wanted it to be, let's see. If we can get that clutch cover off and see what's going on with that clutch. Because it shouldn't be rattling the way it was. Oh, Katie. Katie, Katie, Katie. You have made all my tools in the wrong spot. see if a little compression is enough to hold this or if I'm going to have to go to the trouble of stuffing a rope in the cylinder. I really hope that's not, not the case, but you never know. Alright, give this another shot. So when you're using the rope in the cylinder trick to hold it in place, you want to make sure that your cylinder is past the muffler port so that you don't end up jamming rope out there and really causing a problem. And you want to make sure you've got rope that doesn't have dirt on it. You want to make sure whatever you're feeding it in with doesn't have dirt on it. And you want to do it very carefully so that you don't scratch the cylinder. Or the top of the piston. Katie, please be quiet. Don't drop stuff from the video. That's my job. I just dropped Yes, I know you dropped your chainsaw. I just stepped on my chainsaw. Okay. Well, that's a lot of rope. I hope it's enough. Enough rope. Katie, you have taken all the tools that I had set out and moved them. And now, 
can't find anything. <sighs> See if this sings a different tune. Man. This should be reversed. There we go. There we go. Reverse oh, thread. Folks, this is why this saw was discontinued. The clutch is grenaded. Get over here where you can see it. It's not so obvious from up here until you get to there. Now, right there, those ears are busted off. And you can see it's not quite sitting around. Then you come to the back. Broken, 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 broken. So... I'm going to have to dig through my bone pile and see if there is a clutch in there. So that'll end this video. I was hoping we could do a test run. But I hope this gives you guys an idea of, of how it's not super complicated to tear one of these things apart and service it and get it back together in fairly short order. So the next video of this saw, I sure hope, is one of it running.